Okay, here is the video that I promised for this week. This time we are covering chapter four and chapter five. I have lecture notes. So if you see me going like this, it's because I'm trying to make sure I cover certain things. Um, pretty much showed them to you in class too, but we didn't get to them. So I am just going to keep doing this kind of thing. And um, I don't know, it kind of makes sense. I might even go ahead and make the ones for next week pretty soon. So then next week on Monday, it won't seem so overwhelming. I am in my sunroom. I don't know if it's going to rain. Um, it keeps coming and going. I have a fan blowing. So you see my hair going like that. It's, you know, it's this little thing because there's no air conditioning out here and I get hot. Um, just letting you know these things because I guarantee I'm going to get distracted. You're going to see me fidget and mess with stuff. But the cats are not in here. So that's one thing. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So <clears throat> let me do this whole thing where you now get to see me. Hopefully it'll work in the corner and you will see the PowerPoint behind us. If I do this right, I have the right one. I hope I have it right. So here we go. All right, this is for chapter four. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm like, lungs are going nuts today. All right, so last time we broke down the prefix and the root word, the suffix, the connecting vowel, that type of thing. Now we're just basically covering a lot of, I keep saying the word basic. I was going to say, we're just basically covering some basics, but that is pretty much what we're doing. So here it's knowing who the different health professionals are. You need to know which health professional does what. So orthopedic, you're gonna break those down. And well, in surgery, and I think you already know what that is. This is going to be a medical doctor. Anytime you see MD, that means medical doctor. So that's what they're doing. So the orthopedic surgeons, are the ones that work with prevention and correction of injuries of the skeletal system and associated muscles, joints, and ligaments. So totally reading that right off the paper so I don't mess it up, but that's what they do. Um, I've been to an orthopedic surgeon, so I kind of already knew that one. The osteopathic physician gets extra special training in the musculoskeletal, there we go. I'm gonna go slow on some of these words. Musculoskeletal system and how it affects the entire body. Chiropractor, I'm pretty sure everybody's heard of a chiropractor. Some people just say, oh, all they do is crack your bones, um, crack your neck, but it's not that simple. They have a lot of training to go through this, but they focus on the manual manipulation of joints in the spine to restore health. Um, that's the cracking that they're talking about. So when they adjust your neck or your back or something, it's basically trying to realign everything. Physical therapists and assistants, these are the ones who are going to treat stuff after the fact. They're going to try to help make things a little bit better. If you have ever had a severe injury or known somebody who's had a severe injury, that physical therapist was key to the recovery. Orthopedic technologists and technicians. Orthopedic um, assists the orthopedic surgeons in their treatment of patients. And then we have podiatrist. Podiatrist is totally for the foot. Yeah, I think that's about it. So, yay. Components of the skeletal system. Bone, cartilage, tendons, ligaments. In bio one, two, three, nope, my apologies. Bio one, two, four, we cover all of these. I wonder how many of you have actually taken bio one, two, four yet. Um, it would probably be helpful to take bio one, two, four, and then the medical terminology whenever it's available. So you would already know some of these things. But anyway, um, <clears throat> you probably know the difference between bones and cartilage. Tendons and ligaments is where a lot of people tend to get confused as to where they go. Um, M -U -S -C -L -E. Yes, the tendon is the one that connects the bones to the muscle. And you saw me probably just count it out. It's the way I teach in bio one, two, four is it's the same number of letters as tendon, as muscles. So muscles and tendons have the same. Ligaments are bone to bone. Okay, functions. The skeletal system does all of this. 
it's important. There you go. Word analysis and definition. Mainly here, notice it says identify and define the suffixes, so the last things. So chiropractic, the ick means pertaining to. Chiropractor, O-R, is the person who's doing it, so it's the doer. So notice they both have the chiroprac. Actually, they both have chiropract. And then the ick means it's pertaining to that. The or means it's the person who's doing it. Detoxification, it's fication means remove. Musculoskeletal, A-L, all is pertaining to. Ist, the orthopedist, ist makes it a specialist. So um, optometrist would be a specialist. Podiatrist is a specialist. And then osteopathy. Pathy means disease. So anytime you see pathy, it's going to have to do with the disease. And there goes paper one. Define the following words from Latin. Um, this one I think is a little interesting, but I kind of find this stuff interesting. Cartilage, and yes, this is straight from my notes. <clears throat> Gristle, non-vascular, firm connective tissue found mostly in joints. Ligaments, band sheet, band of fibrous tissue connecting two structures. And I already told you a second ago that ligaments connect bone to bone. Um, saying they band fibrous tissue connecting two structures, that's just a fancier way of saying that. Muscle, uh, muscle comes from muscle. Tissue consisting of cells that can contract. And then tendon, sinew, fibrous band that connects muscle to bone. There you go. And then we have defined the abbreviations. I told you a moment ago that MD means medical doctor. It actually stands for doctor of medicine, but I always remembered it as just medical doctor, so I wouldn't confuse it with anything else. Uh, DC, doctor of chiropractic. D.O., doctor of osteopathy, and P.T., physical therapist. I think most of you already knew M.D. and P.T., so the other two are the only ones you have to really kind of think about. Okay, skeletal system, classification of bones. We have long, short, flat, irregular. Then you have the breakdown of the different bones. This is something for you to just kind of review. I'm not really going to go down all of it. Um, yeah, because we just have a lot to cover. Give adjective forms of the following terms. So right there, cortex, cortical, medulla, medullary, periosteum, there you go. Wow. All of these are from Latin terms in your book. I don't have jotted down what page it would be on, but it will show a breakdown. So like cortical. Cortic and then AL for medulla. You have medullary, which is what it gives you there, but there's also medulla and, oh, and then it shows it breaks down to airy. And this one, ah, the last one, that's the only one that actually has three parts to it. It has peri for the prefix, osteo for the root, and AL for the suffix. So that's one of those that actually breaks down for you. What's the difference in the following terms? Well, I kind of already put it there. Um, yeah, there's not much more for me to say when I've already said it, but I can tell you that the first one, oh, here goes Linda trying to say it, diphysis, diphysis. That's the shaft of a long bone. Um, I just memorized how to write it. I never really memorized how to say it, but as long as you know that part, it's the shaft of a long bone. That's what's growing in between. That's why it's the shaft of the long bone. And the other one is the extended part. So normal bone, and then one with osteoporosis basically. And so you can see that it's actually breaking down. So these are diseases of the bone. Fun fact, has nothing to do with medical terminology, but it has to do with this. When I teach the environmental science class, I show that sometimes they have been able to use um, 
stuff similar to coral, coral reef, in order to replace messed up bones because it actually forms very similar. I always thought that was cool. Okay, <clears throat> define these terms having a common root. Well, I'm pretty sure you're going to see they all have osteo. And osteo pretty much means bone. So you know every one of these are going to have something to do with the bone. I'm looking at all the answers, but I'm not going to cover them all because me just saying them, I don't think it's going to be the same. So here, basically, you see osteo. Osteo, you have probably grown up hearing osteoporosis. You already knew that it had to do with the bone. And so that's the last option there. So you can kind of start to work it around. All the others are just learning the basic suffixes in what it means. Um, actually, I was about to say something, but I want to double check. Yeah, that does work. I'm also going to cover the first word. <clears throat> osteo is bone. Genesis, the beginning, formation. Um, that's literally why the first book of the Bible is Genesis. And a lot of things that have been created that are supposed to start something new are Genesis. Fun fact for game people, that's why Sega Genesis named their first one Genesis, was it supposed to be the formation of something great, the beginning, that kind of thing. So osteogenesis would be the beginning of poems. So identify and define the suffixes from the following terms. Well, achondroplasia, we talked about in bio one, two, three. I don't know if you remember that, um, but we talked about a dwarfism that's based on this. And so this one, let's see. Ah, A means without. So that's why that works there. And then chondro means cartilage, suffix plasia means formation. So that word literally means, putting it around, basically means there's not enough formation of cartilage. Interesting. And that would mean since the cartilage turns into bone, if it didn't actually do everything, that's why they ended up with dwarfism. That's kind of cool. I actually like that. Um, I truly never knew that until, you know, going over this. Sarcoma, <clears throat> malignant tumor originating in connective tissue. Sarc means flesh. Oma means tumor. So this literally means a flesh tumor. So this is basically another way of pointing out why it's so important to understand each of the parts of the words. Oh, goody. More abbreviations. <clears throat> Um, the notes that came along with the PowerPoint and everything said to remind students that abbreviations are used as term shorthand. So you have to make sure to practice the abbreviations. They're in, it, bleh, they are extremely important if you are actually entering the field of any form of medicine where you're going to need this. So BMD, bone mineral density. D-E-X-A is dual energy x-ray ab absorptometry. FDA, well, I think we all know FDA, Food and Drug Administration. <clears throat> IU is international units and MG milligram. Pretty sure everybody knew FDA and MG. The others, those were kind of, those were kind of cool. Okay. Bone fractures, check it out. It's just telling you to look in your book at these pictures. For those of you who do not have a book or if these pictures do not quite work for you, let me know. And because um, it never occurred to me about that, but when we had class, I know at least two people said they don't have books. I can take pictures and post them. That might be helpful. Word analysis and definition describe the differences in the following features. This is one of those that you probably want to look up and make sure you know. Some of them, they're kind of self-explanatory. I'm only going to do the first one. Closed versus open fracture. A closed fracture means what was broke stayed inside. Open fracture means it broke through the skin. I don't ever want to see an open fracture. The, the closed ones are disturbing enough, but yeah. 
Any broken bone I have seen so far, thankfully, has been a closed fracture. Describe the similarities and differences in the following terms. We have a bunch of osteos again, so they all have the same root. Uh, so I guess that means the differences are going to have to do with the suffix. So osteocyte, site means cell. So we already know that's going to be a bone cell. Blast is a bone forming cell. Osteoclast is a bone removing cell and osteogenesis is the process of creating new bone tissue. So there you go. Axial skeleton, axial, like the axis, it's the part that goes straight down the center. So we are going to have our spine here. We have different regions of the spine. Good idea to take a look at it. The main thing I ever see with all of these things is when it talks about the coccyx, that's better known as the tailbone. Um, yeah, there you go. Vertebral column, we have the vertebrae, the intervertebral discs, and the spinal cord. So I'm gonna go back a slide. When you look at the spine, you see all this bone, but they're hollow basically because your nerve cord is going through there. And we cover this in bio 124 for sure. That's why we are chordates, is it? Because we have the notochord, we've got the cord that goes all the way down. So that's your main nerve cord that's going up through your spine. The vertebrae are there to one, protect that very sensitive nerve, but also it helps move everything. In between each of the vertebrae are those discs. The reason this is important to know if you're doing any of the medical stuff, not just know because it's a good thing to know, but I am sure most people have heard of someone who say they've slipped a disc or they have a herniated disc or something blah, blah, blah disc. This is normally what they're talking about is one of those discs get messed up or pinched or inflamed and it causes a lot of issues. So that's what these are talking about. All right, sacrum spine vertebrae. You are supposed to define the term and write the adjective, blah, blah. It's a D, not a B, Linda, adjective form. Pretty much, we just saw them a second ago, so you can do that one. How are the following terms related? Well, the first one is a normal posterior curve of the spine that can be exaggerated in disease. And scoliosis is an abnormal lateral curvature of the spinal column. Both of these tend to be in the thoracic region. So the first one is normal that can be, it can be made a little bit more, but scoliosis is abnormal and it can cause some kind of curvature. Um, this would be easier in person. I was about to ask if anyone knew anybody who had scoliosis because my, my nephew had to have his, uh, he had to have a rod put in his spine to help straighten it due to scoliosis. And so it's kind of like your normal back, your spine comes down and then it kind of does that. You've got that little dip in, in the small of your back. Um, that's the part they're talking about is normal. Sometimes with a disease, it can be a little bit more, a little more pronounced, but scoliosis, it can be that it's not like this, but that turn it to look face forward and it can be more like this. It's like a, a curve, a slightly different direction kind of a curve. So that's the best I can do, sorry. Okay, axial skeleton, we've got the skull in the face the cranial cavity. The cranial cavity, it just means the big empty spot up here. That's where your brain goes. So we've got different parts of the skull. There's actually a lot more bones than this um, once you get really detailed, but this is a lot of friggin' bones for a skull. Before I started doing biology, I really thought the skull was just one big thing with one hangy part. That's really all I thought. I didn't realize there were all these fused Fused, that is not a real word, fused parts of bone that make the skull. But when you think of how a baby is born and the skull goes squish to come out and then it kind of makes a little more sense. But anyway, you're supposed to pretty much start learning this. There are 22 bones that make up the human skull. You should learn how to identify each of these bones. Um, 
supposed to ask what joins the cranium bones together? And the answer is sutures. These are joints made out of thin connective tissue. And what other meanings does suture have to unite by sewing the material used? So sutures just means that it's fused together. So for our bones, it sutures because it's, the joints are connected. Um, suture is also for like getting stitches because it's fusing parts together. There you go. Define the following words from Latin, Greek, or French origin. Straight up in your book um, or Google. But cranium is Greek for skull. Mandible is Latin for jaw. Maxilla is also Latin for jaw bone. So I'll let you guys know those go together. And zygoma is French for yolk. I had no idea that was French. I'm used to everything being Latin and Greek. So that one surprised me when I prepped for this one before. Identify and define the root in the following terms. Should not be too difficult to find roots, hopefully at this point, because if you've been practicing with chapters one through three, and I hope you have been practicing, you should start to pull these out. Um, I will tell you the first one is the first part, like P-A-L-A-T, because I-N-E is a suffix. But this is a bone that forms the hard palate and parts of the nose in orbit. So right up there. So that's what the palate is. Um, yeah, not going to worry about the rest. You can look those up. Define the following abbreviations. Yeah, all these abbreviations you're going to have to learn. That's why I said make sure you start learning them. Again, for those of you who do not have a textbook, um, <clears throat> Message me ASAP, like right after you watch this, tell me if you can find all of these abbreviations. If you can't, I'm going to make sure to tell you what the different abbreviations are. So if you jot them down, that's good. But if it's hard to get from just me talking about it, or <clears throat> if you just do better like me and have stuff on text and you can't find the stuff out anywhere else, let me know. I'll look it up. I'll give it to you. I mean, I won't look it up. I've got it here. I'll write it down and I will send it to you. So just do that soon-ish. Okay. All right. C5. This is the fifth cervical vertebra. Why can I not say vertebrae? C5 dash C6 is going to be that space between the fifth and the sixth vertebrae. T12, the 12th thoracic vertebrae. Uh, MRI, magnetic renaissance, ren it's not the renaissance, resonance imaging. I don't know why I keep saying resonance. That's a time period. Anyway, resonance. There you go. Imaging. And then TMJ. I know what TMJ is, but what it stands for is tempo romandibular joint. T-E-M-P-O-R-O-M-A-N-D-I-B-U-L-A-R joint. Huh. Now you know what it stands for. Already knew what TMJ was, never knew that part. Okay, still on with a little bit more of chapter four. Okay, shoulder girdle and upper arm. Um, yeah, I don't really have much more to say from that. It's just, you know, study the picture, be able to identify the stuff. This, by the way, is the clavicle. So people who are, I was going to say less large than I am, your clavicle is this bone right here. And so when somebody starts losing weight, normally that's the first part that you notice. You'll see, you'll actually get to see the clavicle. And I always thought that was kind of cool. Um, humerus is this part of the arm this bone. And the way I teach it in bio one, two, four is when you hit this, you normally say, oh, I hit my funny bone and funny and humorous. Ha ha. That's how I always remember that was the humorous. Don't know if that'll help you, but there you go. Common disorders of the shoulder. We have shoulder separations, shoulder dislocation, and shoulder subluxation. Um, chances are, you know, a lot of these 
but I never really had heard of the subluxation. So that one I have written down. That one is the ball of the humerus slips partially out of the socket, then moves back in. And it's funny because I have been documented with this kind of thing before because we've you know, we've talked before, I hold my stress in like this, my shoulders live way up high and my muscles will actually tighten enough to kind of pull my shoulder out. And so when I go like this, I'm constantly hearing them go and popping them back in. It's kind of creepy. So sorry for that imagery and stuff, but you know, eh, that's life. Okay. Identify and define the root of the following terms. This is just going to be you practicing. Common disorders of the elbow, tennis elbow, bursitis, and bone fractures. So we've got a few things. <clears throat> tennis elbow. Tennis elbow does not mean you have to play tennis. It's just overuse of the elbow joint. The reason it's called tennis elbow is I think it was tennis players that were originally getting diagnosed because, you know, they're doing this all the time. And so they're constantly overusing it. If you use your arm a lot and you're overusing this part, anybody can get tennis elbow. Bursitis is when fluid accumulates um, I was about to, in the bursa, I have to guess, give you the right name, in the bursa due to inflammation or irritation. You can get bursitis in pretty much any joint, but elbow is common and hip is common. And then of course, bone fractures. Um, just out. I can't even imagine breaking my elbow. Deconstruct the following terms into their elements. Whenever it says deconstruct it into their elements, elements, there's no R in that word, and elements, again, just practice. Prefix, root, suffix, and don't forget, sometimes there will be that connecting vowel. Oh, and I remember somebody asked, um, I want to say it was in the lecture assignment last week, somebody asked how come some words have a prefix and some don't, and it's because not all words need a prefix. That's just all there is to it. Sometimes there's nothing else that needs to be added. Uh, so like the, um, let's see if I say it right, supination. That one, you don't need something before because S-U-P-I-N-A-T means to bend backwards. I-O-N is an action. So this literally means it's, an action or a condition of bending backwards. If you added the prefix pre, then that would mean something before it happens. If you added the prefix post, it means it would be something that happened after. Um, you have various things like that. So sometimes you don't need the, the uh, prefix, but there will always 100% always be a root word. That's the only one you can bet will always be there is the root word. Okay, here we've got our hands. Taking a look at the hand, starting to learn about it, cover this in bio 124 as well. Um, the main thing to note here, I don't know, if, I think we're going to come to this on another one, but I'm going to mention the carpal tunnel syndrome. That's where, I hope you can see the arrow, that's where this area, the carpals, or if you can't, this area in here, that's where your carpals are. When someone's on the computer and they do a lot of typing and they're, that's why they have those keypads that, um, not keypads, the little armrest for when you're on the keypad. Because people who are doing like this all the time can overwork it. And those are the people who then get carpal tunnel syndrome and it's rather painful. Um, imagine if this part of your hand, this part was constantly getting inflamed. It affects everything around it, it's horrible. So. Common disorders of the wrist. Ha, ah, there's the carpal tunnel syndrome. Um, there's a few things there. I'd look them up, get to know them, that kind of thing. Again, common disorders of the wrist, carpal tunnel syndrome. And there is the abbreviation CTS. Common disorders of the hand, osteoarthritis. Oh, sorry, rheumatoid arthritis, both of those have abbreviations. I got distracted by the second one. Um, do I have that written down here? Ah, I do. Ooh, sorry, I just read what that number two was. That is that these nodes will form over the joint. And so you will have all these little nodes on top of the joints. And I guess that's what can cause some of the really, the really bad parts, just ugh. 
Nodule means a small knot. I have that jotted down here to make sure I mention that. So there you go. Nodules mean a small knot. So don't forget that. Define the following root elements. Well, the first one, A-R-T-H-R, means joint. So if you think of things like arthritis, arth, or, it sounds weird to put that extra R in there. That just means the joint. Carp is wrist bones. Osti or osteo is going to be bone. We already knew that one. And phalang or phalange, that's going to be finger because these are your phalanges. Um, that was on the picture a moment ago, just so you know. Okay, define the following abbreviations. Ha ha, CTS, carpal tunnel syndrome, OA, osteoarthritis, RA, rheumatoid arthritis, PO by mouth, PRN when necessary. <clears throat> there are also some optional related abbreviations. I don't think, no, I don't have them. Here are some other optional abbreviations. And by the way, this is going to be your, um, it's going to be your, whatchamacallit, your lecture assignment thing. I want you to tell me about these optional abbreviations. We have DJD. So like David, Jake, David, DJD. That means degenerative joint disease. We have MCP. So like monkey, cat, panther. Why not use those? So MCP, metacarpophalangeal, that is in the hand. PIP, I don't think I need to give you examples for that. Proximal interphalangeal and THR, total hip replacement. So that is one, two, three, four. Those are four optional related abbreviations for this. So that is your official lecture assignment. Make sure to tell me what four I mentioned, what they are, what they mean, and go ahead and give me a little bit of detail. Yeah, that'll work. All right, here we go. Let's continue. Again, if you need these figures, let me know. I will try to remember next time before I make these to add the pictures in here so you've got them. Functions of the pelvic girdle. You got it right there. I don't need to read it. You got the words. Disorders of the pelvic girdle. Um, I'm so sorry, because these just bother me. OK. Um, it's that last one that bothers me for some reason. Diastasis means separation. Symphysis means to grow together. So diastasis symphysis pubis is stretching of pelvis, pelvic ligaments during pregnancy. Um, yeah, there you go. At least you know what it is. Define each term, write it in the adjective for, form. We already got those. Same thing. And again, I leave this for you because, you know, you can do that. We have disorders and injuries of the hip. We got a lot here. There's a lot of issues with the hip. Um, they're used a lot. Just take a look over it. I guess the one thing, I don't know if we've covered necrosis yet, but that's going to be the death of something. Did I even have that in my notes? I'm trying to see. Oh, I did, I did, oh, yay. Um, necrosis is just tissue death. I just told you death of something, so tissue death. So avascular necrosis, um, the head of a femur occurs when the blood supply is cut off, usually as the result of a trauma. So there you go, at least I gave you one of these. Bones of the knee joint. The, um, yeah, patella, by the way, is like your kneecap. Just so you know. Put these in the correct anatomical order. This is always a good idea. I, I, like, I like this one. And if we were in class, I probably would have had you just do it in class because that would be kind of cool. 
So, hey, there we go. There's an extra credit right there. I wish I had a pen with me so I could write this down. I'm like just trying to like mark it on the piece of paper and then setting it aside under my water bottle. But I think this one, and this is me cutting the page so I remember right where it is. This one's gonna be your extra credit. Go ahead and tell me in your lecture assignment um, the correct order of those words anatomically from head to foot. So from top to bottom, tell me what order those should actually go in. That's your extra credit. And you have to say in the lecture assignment, extra credit, and then put it. All right, we have more definitions, surgical procedures. That's a little, that creeps me out because I'm supposed to get these and I don't want them. Um, yeah, so taking a look at these, pretty good idea. That whole total knee replacement scares me beyond belief. Okay, we have, and this is me putting it under my water so I don't forget. Identify and define the root and suffix. You can clearly see the common root. You just have to put together the root with the suffix. And we already learned that A-R-T-H-R means joint. And so every one of these has to do with the joint. Disorders of the ankle and foot. Um, most people probably have heard of a bunion. Most people have heard of strains and sprains, but I don't know how many people have heard of a pot fracture. That's where, let's see. It says in a pot fracture, where's the fracture line? It's on the fibula near the ankle. It can also be associated with a fracture of the medial malleus of the tibia. Yeesh. Now we want the common name of the following medical terms. I can tell you 100% this one, calcaneus, that is the heel. Um, ask me about it in class if you want to, and I'll tell you why I know all about this one. Oh, we are almost finished with chapter four. Okay, diagnostic and therapeutic procedures and pharmacology for bone disorders. We've got, we already covered BMD being bone mineral density, nuclear bone scan, blood tests, and bone biopsy. Diagnostic procedures for bone cancer are x-ray, CT scan, MRI, and a PET. Yes, you should know what all of those mean. If you don't know what PET means, it's positron emission. Oh, I always get this part wrong. Tomography. I always say topography, but it's not. It's T-O-M, so tomography, just so you know. Okay, therapeutic procedures for bone disorders. You've got all these different ways to try to fix the issue. Oh, whenever you're thinking about messed up bones, having the first word be amputation is kind of terrifying, but I think we already know it's to take it off because the root word of amputation is A-M-P-U-T, amput, and that means to prune or to top off. And we already learned that ation is a process. So amputation literally means a process of pruning, which means to cut it off, just creepy. Pharmacology, if anyone's going to work in the pharmacological world, like a pharmacist or clinician, that kind of thing, you have to know these. These are the crazier words, in my opinion, because I suck at them. So first one, bis, for why am I putting an R, bisphosphonates, there we go, drugs that reduce the rate of bone reabsorption. And then corticosteroid. I think most of us have heard of corticosteroids. These are to help reduce the pain and inflammation. These are supposed to be helping for osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. I have a friend who has rheumatoid arthritis, so I've heard some of these before. Again, define the following abbreviations. So here you go. The first one, disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drug, NSAID. This is the one I hear about the most non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. OTC is over-the-counter and TNF is tumor necrosis factor. So as soon as you remember what necrosis means, you understand that one better. Final word, <clears throat> all about your skeleton, remembering the stuff. Chapter five, muscles and tendons. We alluded to them a moment ago. Now we're gonna spend a little bit of time. 
So we have three types of muscle. We have skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. Again, bio 124, we totally cover this. So those of you who are going to take bio 124 next, go ahead and start jotting this stuff down. It'll make a huge section of the next class super easy. So skeletal muscle, this is the muscle that's literally connected to your skeleton. It's all voluntary because unless you have some crazy disorder, you are in control when you move your arm like this and your fingers like that. These are all skeletal muscles that you're using. Your skeletal muscles, while voluntary, also help with one movement, with your posture, helps you sit up, body heat, respiration, and communication, because this is also skeletal muscle, just so you know. Structure of the skeletal muscle, we have striated muscle fibers, striations, and fascia. Fascia is Latin, and it literally means a band. If you know that, you can identify them a little bit easier. Now, we have hypertrophy, atrophy, dystrophy. This, to me, I think is a little easier. I think we might have talked briefly about it in bio one, two, three, but we totally cover it in bio one, two, four. And I'm sure you're tired of hearing me say that about bio one, two, four, but troph basically normally means food. So an autotroph makes its own food. Heterotroph has to get its food. Hyper is above, faster, more, that kind of thing. That's why hyperactive means they're very, very active. A, Told you this before for science, A just means without, none. In bio one, two, three, we talked about aerobic and anaerobic and anaerobic by adding the A meant without oxygen. So A trophy is without nourishment. And then dys, D-Y-S is just bad. And so dystrophy, if anybody reads, dystopia is like a bad future. So dystrophy is just bad nourishment. So there you go. Deconstruct the following terms into their elements. Again, it just means break these suckers down. Define the following words from Latin. You can also, again, look these up. But active and passive should be pretty easy. The only one that might have been weird would be the middle one, but we just covered it a couple of slides ago. Disorder of skeletal muscles. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of these. Um, take a look at them. I'd say check them out, commit them to memory, that kind of thing. <clears throat> Deconstruct the following terms into their elements. Again, just break these suckers down. Diagnostic methods for disorders of muscles and tendons. Uh, diagnostic methods, again, just ways to test. That's all that's trying to say. So take a look and you can see what's up. Therapeutic methods, how to treat. If you have ever heard about rice, and you're going to see this later in the PowerPoint as well, it's going to totally specify what rice is again. Um, <clears throat> rice, that is step one, rest, ice, compression, elevation. So say that you have been, you're going for a walk or you're taking a run and you stumble over something and your ankle kind of goes like this. And you're like, oh, and then you're limping your way home and you feel it, you put your fingers on there and it feels hot. That's a huge thing. When you, it feels hot, it's because the blood's running there. It's trying to repair stuff. It starts to swell. That's the inflammation. Rest, get off that foot. You put the ice on there to try to bring the swelling down. Compression, that's the next thing. So when they wrap the ACE bandage around your foot, that's compressing it, holding it in. Elevation, you prop it up because you're trying not to have the blood go in there quickly. So that's why they tell you rice. Um, <clears throat> Physical therapy, that's actually getting the physical therapy, doing the exercises. Medications, I think you know what that is. Surgery, I think you know what that is. And orthopedic appliances, um, that would be stuff put on there to help. Think of somebody with a broken foot, ankle, heel, and they wear that, um, they're wearing the boot. Now, also think of, my sister had these when she was little. I only know because I saw pictures because I am younger than her. So I don't know if I was even alive or if I was just an infant, but she was bow legged. So like her knees came out and she had to wear these metal braces on her legs. Oh, hey, Forrest Gump. There you go. Forrest Gump, the stuff he had on his legs to hold his legs. And they go clink, clink, clink as he was walking. That would also be an orthopedic appliance. There you go. Muscles and tendons of the shoulder, girdle, trunk, and upper limb. So pectoral girdle, 
That's your pecs. Your chest is your pectoral area. So this means all the stuff up here. It's telling you what it's there for. So there you go. Upper arm and elbow joint. I think you already know upper arm, elbow, elbow joint. The main thing here is to remember what anterior and what posterior mean. Post is after. So posterior is always going to be the back. So you are sitting on your posterior. You know, I don't know if anyone had a grandparent or a parent who used that word. That's what that is. Okay. So more of the upper arm and elbow joint. These are going to be the muscles that move things. This is literally just reading and remembering. I like it when I can actually expand on these things a little bit more. Um, Mm -mm. Tendon disorders, we already talked about these in the previous chapter. We have talked about some, but not all of these. So I would recommend going through here and breaking down the words to figure it out again. Now we've got the pelvic girdle. So these are going to be lower. Glutus, that's going to be your butt. Um, I don't know if you already knew that one because gluteus maximus, I have heard that so many times and I'm seeing if I actually jotted anything down here because I forgot to look at my notes for most of this. Um, did I jot anything down about this one? I've already talked about rice. I've already talked about that. So sorry to make you sit here and wait, not like you know that you're sitting here and waiting or not, but um, <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't say anything about the gluteus maximus, but I've heard that so many times. Um, but yeah, that's what this has to do with. So single form of gluti is gluteus. Adduction is moving toward the midline. I have all this here because this is adductor. Um, if anybody here actually goes to the gym, works any of the exercise machines. That's why I always remember adductor and abductor because, and let me tell you for dyslexic people, it's horrible because D's and B's look alike and I have to take a moment like stare. But adductor, um, I totally got distracted, towards, towards the midline that goes this way. So if you ever use the machine where you sit down and you, your legs are like this and you're pushing them in against the weights, that's using your adductor muscles. And then if you do it where your legs are like this and you're pushing them out, those are your abductor. So I thought that was interesting. Um, don't know if you will, don't know if it will help, but there you go. Okay, now we've got our thigh muscles, quadriceps, hamstrings. Again, these are just a whole lot of things. You break it down, you learn the words, and then you just keep putting the suckers together. Calf muscle, there you go. Tendons, most people have heard of the Achilles tendon, Achilles heel. This is the actual name for it. Deconstruct these words. We've already talked about these for the most part here and there. I just talked about abduction and adduction. Um, so you should be able to figure those out. Okay, multidisciplinary team approach. This means you're gonna have multiple people who have to work together. That's what this is. And I'm like, did I ever write anything about this? No, I don't think I did. I just said, I have written down here that assist means aid. And so anytime you see assist in there, it just means somebody who aids. I-V-E, the suffix I-V-E means nature of. A-N-T means pertaining to. Therapy means treatment that kind of thing. So we've already talked about most of that. It's just breaking these down, having a clue what they are. This is letting you know or reminding you um, that rehabilitation medicine focuses on the function and uh, in order to maintain independence. Sorry, and a good quality of life. Restorative rehabilitation restores the function. So Rehabilitation medicine focuses on the function, restorative or rehabilitation restores a function that has been lost. Maintenance rehabilitation strengthens and maintains a function that was being lost. So 
rehabilitation medicine basically is trying to keep you there. So rehabilitation medicine would be something to keep you going where you already are. Um, not thinking in medical medicine terms, I was going to say it's like people who are staying fit and exercising properly, eating properly, but that's not medicine. So I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, sorry. So rehabilitation is keeping it where it is, basically trying to focus on the function to keep you independent. Restorative means it has already been lost and it's trying to restore it. And maintenance is after you have done the restorative and you're trying to continue strengthening and maintaining. Yeah, there you go. So ADL, I wish I had done this class before I started trying to find a place for my mom to live. Um, she is not in assistive living. We, were, we got her into a, an active adult community. But when I was looking the things up, I just kept seeing ADL and I had no clue what ADL meant. And I finally called one of the places and just asked them because a lot of the places when you're looking for somewhere for someone who's 78 years old, they have, you know, a lot of stuff where they just write ADL. And I really wish they would have just written daily living. But anyway, these are going to be things like eating, bathing, dressing, grooming, toileting, and transferring. I love that phrase, toileting. It just amused me. Um, this is something that everybody has to do every single day. And bathing, no, you don't have to take a shower or a bath every day, but you should be able to do it when you need to. And you need to, you know, that kind of counts with washing your hands and stuff. Um, Instrumental activities of daily living is the I ADLs. And this is where it relates to the independent living, like where my mother is. So we need to make sure she knows how to manage her money, use a telephone, cook, drive, stuff like that. Um, I'm obviously just using my mom as an example. You don't have to, this could be just about anybody. I have a friend who normally I show a picture of him during my welcome thing, but I didn't do it this time. He has a lot of issues. He just got out of the, uh, the rehabilitation place because he was in a coma for like 40 something days starting this past January and went into February. And he just finally has recovered enough of his ADLs in order to go home. He just got to his apartment like a couple of days ago. And it's because he was having issues with all the other stuff. Um, my mom, that managing money is a huge one and I'm still working on her on using that telephone too. So she can use a phone, but she now has an iPhone and she can't figure out how to use Lyft. It drives me crazy. Assistive devices. These are things that literally assist the person to do something. So low end assistive device, cane, walker, shoe insert, that kind of thing. High end are going to be like the computerized communication device, something that costs a buttload of money. That's honestly the way I always look at the high-end ones. Adaptive equipment. This is anything that helps perform the um, ADL. So like someone who can't easily stand up out of a chair, you can get that lift chair. That's an adaptive equipment. So, oh, okay, there you go. Also the eating devices, raised toilet seats, handrails, and in bath and shower, that kind of stuff. So now you get to deconstruct these words to figure out what they mean. I think you can do that one. We've kind of covered most of that. Amputations. We talked about amputation in the previous chapter. Causes for amputation. We have the peripheral vascular disease, PVD, that's for your legs, and wartime explosive devices, which oof. um. BKA will mean below the knee. So that means that they would be happening below the knee. And here's the reasons for them. Deconstruct the following terms. You can do that on your own as well. I think we are almost done with this. Diagnostic procedure. We have blood tests. We have all of these other things all the way down to the myositis specific antibodies. That last one has an abbreviation of MSA 
And what that does is it can confirm a diagnosis of, huh, I wrote this word down and I didn't practice saying it, dermatomyositis or polymyositis. There you go. Um, but basically these are procedures. These are things that are conducted. If you're gonna work in the medical field, it's good to have an idea of these because people are gonna ask you questions. And when somebody comes to the doctor's office and they're asking the person at the desk, they're asking the clinician, they're asking the person who's drawing the blood, they're asking different people questions, this is your chance to shine and to make this person feel better and help alleviate some of their stress by being able to just answer some basic questions and like, oh yeah, I know what that is. It's blah, blah, blah. Because a lot of times being told you are going to be given some kind of a test, some kind of a procedure, just not knowing what it is, is what makes it the scariest. As soon as you can talk to somebody who seems more on your level and they can be like, oh yeah, psh, it's fine. It's blah, blah, blah. It just kind of makes you feel a little better. So I don't know. I kind of, I'm a little naive. I like to think that people who are entering anything having to do with the medical field are actually doing it because they want to help people. So that's why I said this one. Anyway, therapeutic methods. Told you there's rice again, don't forget it. And here's the other, a few other methods. You probably already know them. We've kind of already covered them. Don't forget that physical therapy has an abbreviation of PT. That's not a bad thing to remember. I jotted it down to remind you. Um, another word analysis and definition. So this again, just break these suckers down so you know what they mean. And then we have some more abbreviations. ESR, huh. Erythocyte sedimentation rate. The E R Y T H R O C Y T E. That is what that E stands for. And that's pretty much blood cell. B X, that's biopsy. M S A, myositis specific antibodies. And E M G, electromyography. I almost changed that into a different word. I swear this medical terminology is hard, isn't it? Um, whew, it's like a whole nother language. I guess that's why it takes a lot of practice, right? So now we have the musco, musco, musculoskeletal drugs. We've already talked about these. Um, don't know if it was in this chapter or if it's in the previous chapter because it was like slamming through them, but we got through pretty quick. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Just I would look them up, Google them, look in your book, get a basic idea of what they are. Deconstruct these words, see what they mean, break them down. So again, more deconstruct. And then that brings us to our final words. So again, it's just making sure you know that you can understand what the different things mean. So the entire purpose of all of this, I know I didn't sit there and read everything to you, but I don't think anybody likes it when somebody just reads the PowerPoint to you. Um, I know I don't, because I'm sitting there thinking I know how to read, dude. If I could expand, I try to expand. I couldn't expand on everything because like I said in class on Monday, well, yesterday, it's basically like a massive, vocabulary test for all of this. So practice, 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 practice. And then when you think you're done, practice a little bit more. Don't push anything off because it takes a while to get it. If you are anything like me, you're going to have to read and write these things a few times before you can even start to remember them. That's why the ones that I've taught and used a lot in bio one, two, three, one, two, four, some of the root words, some of the prefix, some of the suffix, some of those, I will just, I could just pop off like this without even thinking because I've done it so many times. But the ones that are newer to me, oh yeah, that's going to take me a moment because wow, it's a lot. And I know it's a lot, but pretty sure everybody here can do it as long as you apply yourself and don't wait till the last minute. Speaking of which, today is Tuesday. I'm wrapping this up. I'm going to post it. Make sure you go over stuff. Don't forget that your test, test one, opens this Thursday. It closes Sunday at 10 p.m. So make sure to not wait until the last minute. If something happens, 
you need to tell me immediately, like at that exact moment. If you wait until late on Sunday to say, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to take it, that's too late. It opens on Thursday. It closes on Sunday. Make sure you get it done, but prepare for it. Do not think you can just easily Google all the answers. It's going to be more difficult for you if you do. Make sure you've done the quiz. Make sure you know the right answers for the quizzes, that kind of thing. It will help. If you've got the fortitude, do those extra quizzes, man. It, it will make your life easier once you do them, but I know they're horrible. They're huge, aren't they? Um, and I think that's about it. So good luck and I will see you on Monday.